It is Thursday, September 21st, 2023. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Ploof. It says so on his shirt. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan along for the ride as well. Can I ask, where do you get, where do you get a shirt like that? At the Ploof store? No, so this is uh, from um, a fan group I had in Minnesota when I came back to Minnesota for the first time with the A's. Uh, a contingency of people had these shirts, and uh, I hung out with them down a left field line. They were all mm. were donning these, and they gave me a couple toys. They've actually been in my closet for a long time, and I was just packing to go camping. I was like, oh, man, I got to wear this for C. Rosie today. So awesome. do you want one? Hell yes, I do. Do they have okay. one in extra fat? Yeah, I'll make okay. one for you. Thank you so much. You could turn it, maybe use one of your bed sheets and just put that sticker on it. It'll be fine. Um, starting off with the tip of the cap, it's the reason I'm wearing a Halos lid today to Brett Phillips, former Tampa Bay Ray, returned to St. Petersburg, and um, ran into his good buddy, Chloe Grimes. You probably remember Chloe, uh, stricken with childhood cancer. And last year, she met up with her favorite player, Brett Phillips, who then homered in the game while she was being interviewed, I believe. And just a really touching, touching moment. Brett Phillips is one of those guys who loves the sport, and he loves the people. You can tell that, Ploop. And so definitely a tip of the cap to not only Brett, but Chloe as well. Yes, tip of the cap to both. And Brett is one of those guys who just... You know, he wants to have fun. He wants to uh, and, and make other people have fun as well. He understands, you know, that part of the game. We talk about it from time to time on this show, how five minutes out of a baseball player's day can make a lifetime memory. And I encourage all the ball players to do it. So Brett's one of those guys that he gets it. So, mm -hmm. yes, tip of the cap. Uh, not only to Brett, but to Chloe as well. And we certainly hope you were doing well, young lady. Uh, I love her smile. Love seeing her at the game. All right, let's get it going with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, what a day for Corbin Carroll yet again yesterday. First rookie ever to be a member of the 2550 club. Diamondbacks sweep the Giants just after sweeping the Cubs as well. They currently hold that second wild card. Fluffy, how surprised are you that Arizona has rebounded after a slumpish start to August and is in playoff position with a week and a half to go? I think I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit surprised. Um, I, I've been surprised by this team all year long. When you watch them play, it's a lot of fun baseball out there, the things they can do on the field. Um, but when you go in, and I, I believe they lost three of four to the Mets, and you know, there's a bunch of teams jumbled up, you know, in that wild card. You got to do something to separate yourself, and sweeping a home stand like this is is definitely something to separate yourself. I think it's cool. I started kind of, you know, checking in on, you know what's going on with the roster what what are they doing differently and i came across a few things what's what's our guy's name steve Barth bartholomew i always mess his name steve what's name? Perfume. i always steve mess Perfume. that name up man you know that by the way you know the history between he and i right i do we've talked about him okay. before on the show and i always mess his name up yeah, i enjoy Perfume. i enjoy him but he has like a newsletter and he was talking about you know tory lavello what he's doing with the pitching staff we know um zach gallon we know uh merrill kelly those guys are going to continue to pitch their normal pitch counts, but with the rest of the staff, you know, he's, he's essentially managing like it's the playoffs. You know, you're going to get your 60 pitches, but any sign of trouble after that, you're gone. And, and they've, they've used an opener against the Cubs. Um, they, they, I think they did that twice where they got to like 70, 75 pitches. Yank. It's time to go. Times like this call for managing like mm -hmm. that. So I, I love that they're making that adjustment. You know, it doesn't it, you know it helps that they're scoring a bunch of runs as well. Like if you score over six runs, you're probably going to win baseball games, especially when you have guys like Zach Gallon, who actually has struggled a little bit over the last four or five starts. He had the shutout against the Cubs in, in Wrigley, but other than that, I mean, he's he's not been himself mm -hmm. in this run. So that's also a little bit surprising uh, that they're able to do this. But um, yeah, I'm I'm surprised, but it's. At this point, C. Rosie, where you know you just got to go do it on the field. You and I can look at the box scores and the statistics. We can watch these teams play. We can think about they should win this game. They shouldn't win this game. But that's what's beautiful about sports. At this time of the year, it's the teams that step up that get the job done. That you know, you know, they're talking about in their clubhouse. Let's be super aggressive on the base pass. Let's let's make you know this Giants team make mistakes. They did, they did that the game before last night, 
Um, and then, you know, Corbin Kelly goes off and, and, and does what he does. I just, it's so fun this time of the year because this is when teams just have to go get it done. Results matter on the field, and here we are. I'm shocked. The answer is I'm shocked. Uh, at the beginning of August, so right after the trade deadline, they lost nine in a row. In fact, on August 11th, they were two games under 500. They were, I believe, three games out of the wild card chase, which isn't much at all at that time of year. But they were leaking oil in a bad yeah. way. You looked at the construction of their team, and you said outside of Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly, the other three days out of those five days that we're playing, we're holding our breath with the starting pitching. And to be honest with you, it hasn't been that great. If you look at their starting pitching stats in the month of September, even when they've been better as a team, not good. And that includes Zach Gallon. You just mentioned him. Like, nobody's got an ERA, I think, under four and a half out of those five guys when you include Davies and Fought and Ryan Nelson. They're just all mid to bad. So you know what's turned it around for this team? The bullpen. Shockingly, I cannot believe this has happened, but it has happened. Mantiply, who is a former All-Star, but has literally been up and down this year to the minors. Castro, Ginkle, all really, really good. Then you add in Thompson, who came over in a trade from Tampa Bay. Fantastic. The, the key move for them was getting Paul Seawall from Seattle. Sure. Gave them, when you have a guy that you know you can plug in in that ninth inning, everything else can kind of fill in behind him or in front of him, I should say. Now, he's had a couple of uh, games where he blew up. He had some a couple of bad outings, but that's been it. Other than that, I think he's gotten something like 11 saves, has done a really nice job. But I am shocked. I am shocked because I just look at that staff and it's like, how do you guys do this, you know, 60% of the time where you hold your breath? We kind of look around the league. There's a few teams there are. like that. You know, it's hard to it's hard to accumulate five quality starting pitchers. It just doesn't happen that often. You know, you have to give credit where credit's due. You know, you challenge the bullpen in these new roles, or you know, say, "Hey, guys, this is what we have to do to get it done," and and they step up. I, I just man, it makes me. I get fired up, man. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, get fired up for your Milwaukee Brewers, who are going to seemingly coast to an NL Central crown. Um, they're up seven on the Cubs with a week and a half to go. Mark Canna, bases clearing double late in the game on Wednesday. Has he possibly been the best trade deadline pickup this year? He's been one of them, no doubt. Uh, we talked about the two, the duo of him and Carlos Santana going over there. Now you add Josh Donaldson in the mix, who's just hitting freaking tank jobs. Yeah. And those are such Brewers signs, Brewers acquisitions. I, I just... I love that for them. I'm going to go – I'm in between two teams right now. Mm. I'm not going to give my other one because you might take that. I'm going to go with two guys on one team, though, because they're both performing you know, uh, about the same. I'm going to go with Jake Berger and Josh Bell. Hey, I, think, I was going that direction. You're going that direction? No, no, no. I was. I, I had them on my list, but I always plan for two, depending on who you depending take. So on go who ahead. I pick. Okay, okay. Go I ahead. think I know who you're going to go with other than that. I, I just think that these guys have come over and 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 honestly similar situations as as Canna and Santana. Like you need to come over and you need to provide some pop. You need to provide some offensive output because these teams were desperately kind of lacking that. And the Marlins I talked about, lack of pop. Well, Berger and I think Berger's got eight homers since he's been over there. Josh Bell has 10 homers since he's been oh. over there. They've both driven in. I think Josh Bell's at 20 runs driven. Like they they produced runs, and that's exactly why they brought him over there. Uh, and they've kept uh, Miami firmly in this wild card race. So I'll, I'll, I'll say those two, uh, but there's a couple out there that really have worked out around the league. Yeah, it, Berger's got a near OPS of 900. He did have to leave last night's game early, uh, tweaked something. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. Who who was the other one that you had on your list out of curiosity before I go? Jordan Montgomery. I was thinking Montgomery. Um, he's had a couple of starts that haven't been wonderful. But against he has, the Twins, he had a bad start, and then yeah, I think, I think he had a follow-up start. Yeah, yeah but other than he had, that, he's been really good. Very, very good. So the I results of the games, though, three and six in the nine games he started. So that's why I didn't go with him. Well, not you his know fault. why that you know not why his that fault. Is. You know why that is. So let's not. I don't want to ruin my Thursday talking about that right now. Um, team we just mentioned, 
Arizona Diamondbacks. Tommy Pham. Yeah, I almost want him too. Uh, not eye popping numbers. Pretty good, but not eye popping. He's got uh extra eighteen extra base hits in forty ish games, ten steals. So mm -hmm. you talked about running and being aggressive. He's doing that. I guess who's been hitting third for the Arizona Diamondbacks? Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham, guy in his mid thirties. He ain't for everybody, but you know what? I've always loved his intensity. Like he's probably wound a little too tight, but that's okay. I mean, sometimes you need that, you know? Um, and I know that they've got their leaders, particularly with Longo there. It's not like they need that. But sometimes you need an extra dose of intensity and guys that grind. And they, they have a lot of guys that haven't been through a pennant race. It hasn't been a very good franchise in recent years. So – I think it's nice that there's a dude who's just like, let's ball and let's play, let's play baseball like it's football sometimes because that's what he does. Yeah, I, I I talked to Longo about their clubhouse a little bit, and he just says they're having a, a great time. I do think they have a great mixture of guys there, guys that are intense, guys that can have fun and keep it loose. You need to have that. Uh, no, Tommy's been great. He's also like had some very clutch hits for them mm -hmm. as well, which which means something because at this point of the season, like I mentioned earlier, it's just about those victories. Personal stats aside right now, 10 games to go, your stats are what they are. You can add a few counting stats here and there, but it's yeah. time to go win ball games, boys. And that's all that matters. So if you got to get a bunt down, I'll, our guy Ryan O'Hearn, since he's done that for the Orioles, he's gone off. Bunts are still alive, people. Don't kill the bunt. You and Brian Kenny have a nice discussion about that. Yeah, me and uh, Brian. But by the way, we should give a little love to Mark Canna, who's got an OPS around 850 since he joined the Brewers. When he's not hitting – clutch homers or doubles he's getting hit by a pitch oh my god is that guy 30 30 30 runs driven in for the brewers in guys, uh 42 games so guys a human pinata though uh today's episode of baseball today is sponsored by these guys at shady rays I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last our friends at shady rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price a shady rays offers a world-class product it is just as good as any expensive pair you've ever worn they got durable frames, extremely clear optics. Ploof looks great, but when doesn't he, of course? And that's not all. You've heard me talk about this all the time, that Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair of these bad boys is backed by lost and broken replacements. What does that mean? If you lose a pair or you break a pair, even on day one of ownership, Shady Rays is sending you a new pair, no questions asked. So if you want to call them up with some sob story and say... I just bought these the other day, and I broke them. I love the way they, they're going to stop you right there. They're going to say, Rose, shut your mouth. We got your address on file. I don't need no sob story. We're sending you another pair. But don't you need to know? Shut up, Rose. I told you. It's enough. They're not going to be that mean to you. I, I would, but that, I, that's why I'm not being hired by Shady Rays in the near future. They will send you a new pair, no questions asked. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out the best deal of the season. Head on over to ShadyRays.com. Use that code today. You're going to get 50% off two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses. And that offer now applies to the custom Jimmy and Jake collab shades. I saw them when we taped Floorball 2. I tried them both on. You might not be as cool as Jimmy or Jake, but you can look as good. Thanks to Shady Rays. We move on to the American League race. Houston holding a tight lead over Texas and Seattle. All three of those teams are keeping an eye on the Toronto Blue Jays, who are currently a half game up on Houston and a game ahead of the Rangers and Mariners for the second wild card. So hopefully you understood all the math there. Which of those four teams are you most confident in over the last 10 days of the season? This was a very difficult question for me. I know. You Good knew one. that, C. Good Rosie. One. Uh, initially off the top of my head, I say Houston, I think I'm conditioned. They've conditioned me to just trust that they're going to be not only in the playoffs, but in the ALCS, but I'm not going to pick Houston. I look at their schedule. They have Kansas city, I believe. So that's great. Good for them. They're playing. Mm -hmm. I think it's the worst record in the big leagues. Do they have the worst one of, but then after that, to finish off, they're at the road in Seattle, mm -hmm. in Seattle. And then in Arizona, a team we just talked about, both teams fighting tooth and nail mm. to get to the playoffs. So I'm not going to pick them. 
And I know it's going to sound weird who I'm going to pick because this team faces Seattle a lot. I think I'm most conf- I'm very confident in the Rangers. Wow. I am. I am. I'm not going to get off the train now, see Rosie. We got Jonah Heim and Mitch Garver hit tank jobs back to back last night. I think this offense can overcome whatever pitching liabilities that they have. I really do. And they kind of slump for a little bit. Let's get hot at the right time, boys. And they kind of look, they face, I have it up right here. They face um, Seattle six times. They're five and one against Seattle this year so far. And then seven they face times. The eight, seven times, excuse me, you're right. Uh, they face them seven times. They're five and one against them this year. Now, that doesn't mean anything, honestly. Um, but like you have that in your mind. Then you face the Angels. You're five and five against them. You get three games against, uh, against them. But I don't think those are two different types of ball clubs right now, especially, you know, where the Angels are at with their roster and all that stuff. So I'm just calling this Rangers offense out. It's there in front of you. Go score six runs a game like we know you can, and you're in the playoffs. It's as simple as that. Okay. Yeah, everybody, if you're going to do the schedule thing, let's just make it very clear. They're all over the place. Yeah, it's very, very, very clear. Seattle has seven with Texas and three with Houston. Houston has Kansas City, ends with Seattle and Arizona. Texas, seven with Seattle, three with the Angels. And the Jays, seven with Tampa Bay, who's still fighting for the AL's best record, Mm -hmm. and three with the Yankees. So let's go with the teams I'm going to knock out, why I'm not picking them. The Jays, a little worried about Vlad. Even though they've played well, I'm a little worried about Vlad. Had to be held out because of a knee. It's something You've that's never been, been on the Jays anyway. You're, you're yes, I have. I picked them to make the World Series, so I want them to get into the playoffs. Okay. We're asking the question is, who are you most confident in? Three of these four teams are making the playoffs, so I think the Jays will make it, but that's okay. I'm just a little worried. Texas, do I have to tell you why I'm worried about Texas? I no, know why you're worried about Texas. Bullpen. Houston, not playing great baseball. Eight and nine in its last 17, even though it's rather healthy. Odd. Houston fans clipping that. Seattle Mariners. Let's go. Let's go, Ems. I believe in you. Now, what did you say their record against uh, the Texas Rangers was? They're one and five. They're one and five against them. Do you know the last time they played the Texas Rangers? Got to be June. It was June. It was the first week of June. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what the Mariners' record was at the conclusion of that three-game series they played against Texas? Uh, under 500. It was under 500. You are correct again. 29 and 30. At the time, they were almost 10 games behind the Rangers in the division. Mm-hmm. They were looking at each other and going, Jesus, do we have to strike out 17 times a night? Can we please put a ball in play when we need to? They were a mess. Well, you're bringing you know it back ha- now. Yeah. You know what's happened the second half of the season? Julio! That's what's happened. The man has put on an MVP second half type season. Back when they got swept by the Rangers in early June, the Mariners were outscored 30 to 9 in that series. You don't think that that series has been imprinted on their brains since then? They are going to go into Texas this weekend. They're going to win that series. They are going to take care of business against the Houston Astros, whom they just swept recently, and then they're going to finish it off at home in front of one of the great baseball crowds in our nation, up there in Seattle, where the people are going to pour into that arena where we were this summer for the All-Star Game festivities. The place is going to rock just like the first round of the Home Run Derby when Julio is hitting bombs to every part of the stadium. They are going to triumphantly lift their first AL West crown in decades, and they are going to say, we are on our way to the playoffs. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I didn't know you were going there, to be honest with you. Now, the reason I mentioned the record wasn't because of, I think, that that matters. I'm, You know, I'm a t- tiebreaker Trev is what they call me. Mm. So the Rangers, all they got to do is win... One of those games, two of those games, two of the seven, they have the tiebreaker. They do, Mariners, have, because they've beaten the Astros. They whooped that butt all season on their eight and two against them. So they already have the tiebreaker against the Astros. 
and they do not have it against. Oh, they would win it against Toronto. Same. Okay. Okay. See Rosie. So Houston's out of the playoffs. You heard it here. Didn't say that. Oh. Did not say that. What'd you do? Who's out of the playoffs then? I did now. Nah, I didn't on the spot. Questions. Go. Say the Rangers. Most, I'm most worried about Texas. Say the Rangers. Okay, I I'm love not, I'm most, I said I'm most worried about Texas. I don't want any of them to miss it. I think they're all really good stories. All right, let's move on to our next question. During the Blue Jays win in New York, Yankee skipper Aaron Boone uh, got tossed again. Apparently didn't see eye to eye with the home plate on Blance Barrett. This is pretty good. You know, going on what you were saying, David, yesterday Bill Miller cut it off early. He said, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And this time Lance Bauer did. There he goes. Oh, I said soon, right? Yep. Yeah, we just had that feeling. He had that look from the first inning. And, you know, he's trying to protect his players. He's having a hell of a night. I know you have the biggest zone in the league. You must fucking know it, too. The ball that judge is not fucking. That is worse than you. Oh, yes. The double F-bomb. On, I think the game was on Prime last night. So maybe that that's why they let it go a little bit more. I just want to give a, an additional like tip of the cap to the Yankees broadcast for not talking over the two F words that Booney put out there. Cause that was, I mean, that, we didn't need Jimmy to strip down the audio on this one. You love the F word. No, I, it's, what's funny is I like Lance Barrett. He's actually, you know, a guy that will talk to you and, and he will, you know, go back and forth and you can question some things against him. But, you know, Aaron's kind of been on a roll as of late. How many times has he been thrown out in the last month? I feel like it's been like three times in the last month. So when, since he became the Yankees manager, I think he's been tossed 33 times. He getting it. He, You know what? I dig it because there are some times where you just want your manager to stick up for you. It doesn't happen all the time. You don't need it all the time. But when, when it does happen, it kind of fires you up. So I think Aaron understands, obviously, a former ball player, a legacy dude. He gets it. Do, do you know, do guys get fined for that? Do managers? Yeah. I think they I think they do. I don't think it's a lot of money, depending on what happens. You know, like, what are you going to do on the field? If you just get tossed and, and kind of say your piece and get out of there, I don't think, I think it's pretty, pretty light. Pretty light. If you start throwing gear and you start doing that stuff, I think it could turn into something more. Yeah, I just I love it because we have it just feels so infrequent these days. I mean, replay has taken a lot of the sting out of arguments. Uh, it's basically balls and strikes. Everything else gets replayed and, you know, you can't argue a replay. So unless you're really infuriated with it, if it's a catcher uh, called for blocking the plate or something like I think you should be able to argue replay like look. Oh, look, I agree. You and I are not in the same place right now, right? I do talking baseball. One person's in New York, just like replay yeah. officials are in here. Hey, zoom it in, buddy. Let's go. Dude, I am on board. Let in fact put the zoom on the big board. Every stadium and great everyone just scoreboard. starts yelling. <laughs> exactly. State your case. Like the manager <clears throat> can wear a headset so that you can better communicate. But everybody should be oh, able to hear the discussion. How great would that be for baseball? Dude. Not okay. You know what? Because umpires don't want that. They don't want to like be on the jumbotron. Oh, people that. arguing. Cares. But let's get them on the jumbotron explaining why they oh. made the call. You know, yes. So they can't hear anybody talking back. But let's at least get them on there explaining why they made the call. Because like in the NFL, they go up to the box and they have to ex- they like explain what happened. Kind of. Sometimes they do. Not every time. Well, but n- but not the replay officials. The actual referees in the stadium have to they, yes exactly they though, go yeah even though they're not the ones i think we, we would like explanations somebody. yeah i think we should have somebody at chelsea piers which is where the replay center is isn't it i have I no it. idea what you just said yeah i think that's i think that's where it is okay. they should have somebody on a headset it's one of the umpire crews because on a week where they're not working on the field there there's two umpire crews i think up there um administering replay Throw on a headset, get on the big board. Hey, here's the reason we did this. No shit. Like, that seems too sensical. I, I'm i just like really, my mind is spinning right now. Yeah, do it. Are, are we wearing umpire's uniforms in the replay booth? Because they better be. You better be official. This is a professional sport. They're definitely not. They're definitely okay. not, but it's possibly should be. 
All right. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about sleep on this show and how some of us need more of it. And we're always looking for ways to make ourselves more comfortable. Well, I think I have found a way. When you're talking about sleep quality, temperature, body temperature at night, it is something that it's oh so important. I got something that is inspired by NASA. It's called a Miracle Made. It uses silver infused fabrics, makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Now, the sheets are infused, as I mentioned, with silver, and that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, which can clog your pores so it allows you to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. And Miracle Sheets, they're luxuriously comfortable and no high price tag of those luxury brands out there. So go to trymiracle.com slash today. You try Miracle Made Sheets, and whether you're buying them for yourself or a gift for a loved one out there, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code today at checkout, you're going to get three free towels and save an additional 20%. So you get these great sheets, plus you get free towels, plus you save an additional 20% on top of the 40 Oh, hmm. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So that means if you're not 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. We got the sheets. I told you it made a difference in the way that I sleep. I feel better. I'm one of those hot boys at night. I get really toasty. So I need to stay nice and cool. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash today. Use the code today. Claim your free three-piece towel set. Save over 40% off. Once again, try miracle.com slash today and treat yourself to a better night's sleep. Before we get out of here, the best thing I saw this week in the baseball world actually happened a couple days ago out in Los Angeles. Bruce Dar Gretterall, reliever for the Dodgers. I believe it's the team that followed him to the airport. And he got to see his mom, who's from Venezuela, for the first time in seven years. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are joining us on audio only, please go to our YouTube version just so you can see how that went. And you say seven years. Why did it take so long? Well, she was having a ton of visa problems, and he had tried forever to get her over here. Couldn't do it. So she got to meet his wife and little daughter, and then that night got to see her baby boy, who's not so babyish anymore, pitch. And when he got the third out of the eighth inning, he is, he's got his face in his glove because he's just tearing up so much. I mean, <laughs> I, dude, I'm like tearing up thinking about it. No, that's a, it's amazing. I am too. That's crazy. Seven years without being able to see your mom and then bringing her to Los Angeles where you get to wear those crispy whites at home. You get the job done. I mean, there wasn't anybody prouder in the universe right. last night than Bruce Starr's mama. So I, I love it. This is why do you got to do this to me, man? I was like that's all good. happy. Now I'm sad and still happy. Yeah, if That makes sense. So that happened a couple of days ago, but I wanted to bring that back just because uh, the Dodgers put out the the piece where he, he went to the airport to go get her. So that was really a cool moment. That was great. That was awesome. All right. We are back at it again on Friday to get you set for the penultimate baseball weekend of the regular season. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the uber-talented Trevor Plouffe, because it says so on his shirt, I am Chris Rose. We will see you Friday on Baseball Today.